it's not often I've been talking to someone for about five, six years and I haven't met them before today. Well, that is what's happening today. Chris Locke has joined us in the studio, Managing Director of Oystertrade.com. Very nice to see you in the flesh. Good morning, sir. Good, good. And uh, you're over for a uh, society dinner, technical analyst dinner, aren't you? I'm over. Is that like getting cats in a room? The gaffer dinner this evening. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, all in our evening suits. So Brilliant. All right. Good well, that's good. And uh, so let, let's start off. We listened to uh, what Jeroen van der Veer had to say just there. Let's start off with uh, the oil complex. It's had a remarkable rally off what those February $32 lows. Now uh, around about $70 a barrel. Where next? Okay, the, for me, the crude oil um, made an important low at the beginning of March, and this trend should take us up um, uh, somewhere towards the end of the year. Um, certainly, the first part should take us up into uh, the August period. I've been looking for a level up towards the $75 level for this particular move. I will stick with that uh, level at the moment. Um, and I think uh, once we've seen some kind of correction out the way during the summer months, we could then attack the higher levels up towards $85, $90 a barrel. Mm. I'm curious how you may read the momentum that we saw overnight from the 69 level right through 70 to 71. It seemed like quite a big step up, despite the fact we've already risen quite alarmingly in a yeah. short space of time. Yes. I think this ties in actually for me with the, with the cycles on the stock markets relatively um, firm until the period of August or so. Um, then I'm expecting the stock markets to begin some kind of correction um, and uh, the, uh, the oil picture should also sort of start to move a little bit of the stock market. In other words, we should see some kind of correction from at some point in the summer. You we were talking with uh, Jane about her scepticism that the uh, euro can maintain its recent gains against the dollar. But um, I want to see another one of these key pairs now, and the dollar yen pair, and it's one you want to focus on as yeah. well. Um, the weekly dollar yen is, um, for me, in a very, very uh, large long term uh, downtrend. And um, we can't see it on this uh, particular chart. But uh, we've seen levels before down. Um, uh, 80 uh, and under and I really expect that the dollar eventually to resume its uh, uh, down, uh, long term downtrend. The dollar yen has been leading the way for this particular move um, and I would expect the dollar to uh, resume its downtrend against the other currencies as well. I, I, I see that uh, we could eventually uh, get to levels uh, towards 70 and under. Mm. Okay, um, in terms of gold Where's gold trade? 9.54 or something last time? It's, uh, well, I mean, it just gets such split opinion, doesn't it? There's one. Well, what are your thoughts? Gold I still like. Gold for me is the currency. I, I'm, I'm not keen. You know, I consider all currencies are bad during this period, 2009 to 2011. Uh, gold for me is, is the currency to be in with, uh, 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 with silver and, and, and some gold mining shares. But gold for me is, uh, is, is on its way now up to test the 1040, 1060 level. Once we've broken 1060, it will move very quickly towards 1200, 1250, 1300. Mm, indeed, I've heard a few of those forecasts before. 12 1200, certainly being a number, but gold traditionally is a safe haven play. The sort of moves we've seen in gold doesn't suggest it's a safe haven anymore. So if you are looking for that sort of investment, would you still be taking gold in your portfolio? Uh, yes, I would still be taking gold in the portfolio, but on, on sizable dips. Um, uh, what, what's a sizable dip then? What should we look for in the, in the price of gold to buy into? What's the entry price? Well, I think the last dip uh, that we saw um, uh, pretty much uh, sealed the, uh, the downside, and I don't think we'll revisit that. But if we, if we should see pullbacks to the low 900s, I would say that that should be the good strong support from here. Um, and only if you start breaking uh, um, 860 would that sort of uh, suggest that uh, we have more work to do to the debt to the downside. But for the time being, good support. Uh, these markets um, really struggling to get up from here, the equity markets as well. Um, we've just run into buffers on all kinds of indices. Uh, uh, just put it into context with the S&P for us, would you? Yeah, the S&P, I mean, overall, I see this as a, a relatively stable period, moving sideways from the period of October, November, uh, possibly into August. It, it, it may uh, peak out uh, around mid-July or so. Um, and then I think we're going to hit some, uh, some, some, some problems and uh, start to see f uh, corrections back to the downside. I do not see the... The worst part of this um, um, uh, overall move on the markets, long-term move, uh, I don't see the worst part until 2010. Right. May to August 2010 is the deepest point. Right, okay, so we'll be dipping right back down. Uh, very nice to see you.